Insertion sort, a classic sorting algorithm that is thought in schools everywhere. Today, we'll look at a small variation of this and see whether it actually makes things a little bit better. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Yes, we're still doing sorting algorithms, um, but today we'll look at a small variation of an existing one. And that, of course, would be insertion sort. Now, let's have a very quick recap on what insertion sort actually does. Here's the idea, we have our unsorted list. And, well, the first item can be considered sorted on its own. We go to the next item, and essentially the idea is we want to keep shifting it back so that we form a sorted sublist on the left. We pick up the next item, right, and we keep shifting it back until, again, we have a sorted sublist on the left. So you get the idea. Every item is picked up and moved into an appropriate position on the left sublist. Essentially, our left sublist is sorted at all times, whereas we have an unsorted right sublist in which we are going to have to pick up items and slot them into the right place on our left sublist. So yeah, a sorted sublist grows while the unsorted sublist diminishes. That's what insertion sort is doing. Now, you might be wondering this. Isn't that somewhat inefficient? Well, the answer is yes, of course. Insertion sort is an O n square algorithm. But because we are basically taking an item and comparing it linearly against things, you know, one by one until we finally find the correct position, we seem to be doing a lot of redundant work. Surely there is a better way to find the correct position without having to compare our new item against everything that was there. And maybe the first thought that comes to mind would be binary search, since that list is already sorted. Well, you would be correct, there is an algorithm called binary insertion sort that does just that. And now for a quick recap on binary search. First, this only works on a sorted list, right? If it's not sorted, the assumptions here are invalid. But here we have a sorted list, and what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting a left and right pointer across the whole list. We find the middle position and check to see if it's smaller or larger than what we're looking for. Let's say in this case, we want to look for the number 5. Of course, in this case, our mid value 4 is smaller than it, and this allows us to eliminate that entire left half of the list. We move our left pointer past our previous middle pointer, and again, we have a new left, right, and mid. Because 6 is larger than 5, again, we eliminate that half of the list, we shift our pointers, and we find ourselves looking at just one element, 5, the element we want to look for. So in this list of 7 items, with just 3 comparisons, we end up at the right place. We end up having found the element. Finally, we can combine these two things together to create binary insertion sort. Now, the first item isn't so interesting because in and of itself, it's already sorted, right? No insertion can happen. So let's start from our second item instead. The idea is we want to binary search our sorted sublist to see where this new item goes to. In this case, because we only have one item, well, that one item has already been flagged out, right? Our terminating condition for binary search is when left and right end up together. Now, in this case, we actually have to do one more step and that is to see where this element should be relative to the element that has been so-called found. We compare 3 and 7 and find that since 7 is greater than 3, it must come after 3. Let's go on to our next item. 1, in this case, we do binary search. 1 is less than 3 and therefore our right pointer goes left of our left pointer. Even though this looks a bit strange, we can still get the midpoint of the left and right pointers and this indicates the number 3. Comparing 1 against 3, we see that 1 is smaller. This indicates to us that 1 needs to come before 3, and therefore it is inserted there. So we move on again to the next item, right, we pick up 4, we do binary search, and that eventually flags out 7 as, well, the so-called selected item. We have to do one more comparison, right, 4 versus 7, we find that 4 needs to be inserted left of 7, like so. You get the idea, right? We rinse and repeat with 6. We end up at 7. 6 is less than 7, so it's inserted on the left. 
2. Again, binary search, and what happens is we end up at 3. 2 is less than 3, so it's inserted on its left. 5. Again, we do our binary search, and this time we converge on 4. Because 5 is greater than 4, we insert it on the right of that. And there you go, that is binary insertion sort in a nutshell. Now, there is one case we didn't consider here, which is what happens if there are repeated elements. But as it turns out, it's exactly the same. You do binary search, and what happens is, well, whether or not your binary search runs to completion doesn't matter. Eventually, you'll find that the item here is equals to the item you want to insert. No problem, we simply insert the new item either to the left or the right of this, right? Doesn't matter as long as you do it consistently every time. Ultimately, because these two elements belong together, it's going to be the same. Now, in terms of how much work needs to be done um, between these two sorting algorithms, insertion sort, of course, as a quick recap, will do a minimum of one comparison. That's, of course, in the best case in which, well, this item checks itself against, you know, its neighbor on the left, realizes that this item is already smaller, so I don't have to go further, right? This item can be put right down where it came from. In such a case, you only do one comparison, right? No more work needed. Of course, in the worst case, this is the very last item, and it happens to need to be sort of bubbled all the way to the left. In that case, you need to do n comparisons, right? You need to go all the way across the list. So these are the sort of terms we are looking at for our normal insertion sort. With this, we can move on to binary insertion sort. The idea is this, again, at a minimum, we only need to do one comparison, and that is if these two items are the same, right? Your mid, the very first mid you see, is the same as the item you want to insert. As a result, you simply insert it around the same place, you're done. In the worst case, well, you basically have to find the item that is closest to this item you want to insert, and that's going to take up to log n comparisons. And then technically, you do need to do one more, right, to know which site to insert our new item into. However, log n is less than n, so it appears that, well, we do actually have better performance for binary insertion sort. So at face value, this is great. What this means is things are more efficient than your normal insertion sort. However, in practical terms, turns out it's not that great. And here's why. While we're actually working with arrays of items, just inserting an item in the middle of an array is something that is not quite as straightforward as it sounds. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to have to move all the items forward one by one, and then put the new item where it has to go. What this means is really you're not doing any savings because ultimately you still have to linearly loop through all the items that got displaced and basically manually displace them. The normal insertion sort basically performs swaps as you move the item backwards. So that, you know, complexity is basically already included in what normal insertion sort actually does. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why binary insertion sort is still slow. It's still an ON square algorithm, unless you can somehow magically not have to shift the items. If that was somehow possible, binary insertion sort would have become O and log N. We know this because we are basically performing N times log N operations, right? Basically, we have a list of N items. We are visiting each one of them, and for each, we are performing a log n binary search. So that would give us n log n. However, because we still have to incur the time of shifting all the items within the array, we don't get to enjoy this benefit. So yeah, because of this problem, binary insertion sort is still an O n square operation. However, if you thought of this as an optimization to insertion sorts, then good job, that means you're thinking. A lot of students, I realize, you know, actually ask me this or, you know, kick this idea around in their head. And that's good. Even though at the end of the day, unfortunately, we're not able to enjoy the advantage, being able to come up with this idea or really any other idea to optimize a slow algorithm is great because that means you're thinking. And that's the most important part of, you know, learning algorithms. Anyway, that's all there is for this episode. I hope you've gained some insight today. But until next time, 
You're watching 0612TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.